Okay, don't tell anyone this bit, but this is my favorite session of the convention. This is the absolute best. Don't tell any of the other so so session organizers or they'll get upset with me. But this is where we get inspired. This is about listening to the pitches of 15 finalists to win $100,000 to put their great idea into practice. And so what we're gonna go through are these 15 pitches. Each, each team have five minutes to convince you, the audience, and convince the judges that their idea is the best. What are we looking for in this? Well, we're looking for ideas that bring new partnerships together. We wanna see teams joining up that maybe haven't worked necessarily so well together. We wanna to be seeing ideas that are gonna transform the world. Great, innovative ideas, but we're also looking for ideas that will generate impact. So they're scalable, they can go somewhere. And obviously we're looking for ideas that are convincing, that are gonna solve problems that are pressing in the world right now. So we're gonna hear these pitches, we go one by one, stay with me. It's 15 we're gonna work through, but each one's five minutes, they've been practicing, they're brilliant. And please go in the Q&A, in the chat box, and start depositing your comments and your ideas. Ask the proponents questions. We're gonna have a very lively discussion. We wanna put them to the test and make sure that their idea is viable, feasible, and gonna be great. So, we're gonna start first. It's always good to start a session like this with something awesome. And so, well, Lel, let's hear about awesome. Hi, my name is William and I'm here with Lexi to explain to you why our solution is awesome actionable satellite observations for microfinance. Agriculture is the backbone of many sub-Saharan Africa economies, yet paradoxically, only 1% of bank lending across the continent goes to the sector. Many financial institutions shy away from financing smallholder farmers, citing unfit credit risk models as the primary reason they're unable to make informed credit decisions. As a result, Smallholder lending reaches less than 10% of the 48 million smallholder farmers in Africa. Recent flooding events witnessed in Kenya, as well as COVID-19, have further exacerbated the pressure on smallholder farmers, financial institutions, and the country's food security. So how does our platform reach the other 90%? By enabling financial institutions to demystify the real credit risk each smallholder poses. This will be achieved by focusing on estimating their individual ability to generate cash, to repay loans, and by monitoring their climate risk exposure over time, such as the effects of flooding, drought, and temperature changes. At Awesome, we are now developing an integrated digital platform that generates credit scores, which employ a flexible algorithm that looks at several risk drivers, including farm profile, household income, crop data, and many more. By lessening their dependence on the availability of collateral, we can, in a scalable manner, serve marginalized communities, especially women who often don't possess household land titles. So how do we adequately assess climate risk at the smallholder level? We do that by building upon the climate modeling experience of the CDIAR, bringing climate aggregate scores to the farmer level by introducing a unique patented field scale data set. This, this satellite technology uses passive microwaves to monitor the growth of crops and the moisture in the soil. We do that every day, unhindered by clouds. We can also look back 20 years in time in a consistent manner, which is essential for financial risk assessments. When integrated and tested in the credit scoring platform, the awesome solution enables us to capture climate risk in an unprecedented way, thereby reducing financial risks for microfinance institutions. Moreover, less weight is given to the collateral. Instead, more weight can be given to the actual ability of the smallholder farmer to repay their loan based on their ability to generate cash flows. This will allow financial services to become in reach of millions of smallholder farmers. As Awesome automates loan appraisal processes, financial access can be secured even in times of pandemics. So who is part of this Awesome team? We are a young and diverse group of people who all bring a piece of the puzzle. We combine the operational credit scoring and microfinance offering of financial access and ECLOF, the climate modeling and remote sensing know-how of CGIAR and Van der Sat, and connect to the insurance applications with our partner, Acre Africa. We have good experiences of working together on various projects. 
So if you choose our awesome solution, we can build and test it within a year. We start with the development of satellite enhanced climate agri-risk scores and integrate them into the credit scoring model. We then test, evaluate and optimize the solution during the long rains in Kenya among 500 farmers in Machakos and Moranga County. Because the data and machine learning analytics behind the climate agri-risk scores is extremely scalable, the solution can be easily upscaled to other countries. After a dedicated and realistic pilot phase, we will scale up to 1500 farmers in both growing seasons for multiple crops. We also aim to bundle the loans with insurance. These phases prepare us to uncover the full potential of ECLOFS and Acre Africa's farmer base, which consists of around 600,000 smallholder farmers. Once established, we will bring this solution to the 43 million smallholder farmers in Africa that are ex excluded from financial access until now. Following appropriate data protection laws, we will release an anonymized data sets on household dynamics to support research programs working on improving the livelihoods of smallholders. Awesome connects the best credit scoring methods, climate models, and satellite data, making climate adapted financial inclusions of smallholder farmers a reality. Thank you. We're coming from the sky, from the orbit satellites, and we're going down to the ground. And we're landing specifically for the next one in Nigeria, where we're going to hear about sustaining staple food with supply chain integrity. It's a bit of a mouthful to say, but we're going to hear about a great team with a great idea about that. Hi there, my name is Jan van Ypren and I'm delighted to present our submission to the CJAR Inspire Challenge on behalf of Elkanes, Harvest Plus and the New Fork. In Nigeria, half of the population suffers from hidden hunger due to a broken food system. Many work to ensure the population has access to a more diverse diet, but the major staples will still contribute a large proportion of calories to the population of Nigeria. With those calories, delivery of sufficient micronutrients needs to be ensured. But vitamin A deficiency costs Nigeria about $180 million annually and affects approximately 30% of the population. Maize is a low value crop with a massive impact on the daily lives of over 30 million children in Nigeria. It deserves to be nutritionally enhanced and protected through the value chain. Nutrient enriched crops are a proven solution for reducing malnutrition. Scientists, governments and experts all agree on that. That is why we focus on biofortified vitamin A orange maize as a food system to deliver the micronutrients to reduce vitamin A deficiency. But reaching more people with biofortified vitamin A orange maize is held back due to lack of traceability in the supply chain. It is really hard to determine what is biofortified orange maize and what is not. This forms one of the biggest barriers for stakeholders to scale and for the food industry and consumers to adopt biofortification. Protection and verification of the authenticity simply is not there. That is where we come in and use blockchain technology to address this challenge. The immutability of blockchain technology lends itself perfectly to create a traceable food supply to agri-food producers and the populace. Something that will finally allow adoption of biofortified foods by the global food manufacturers. We will create a self-sustaining, fraud-free traceability system that distinguishes and separates biofortified maize from standard on the journey from seed to shell. And why us? Because we can. We are joining the forces of three different organizations on three different continents with great chemistry and a shared vision that flourishes in this project. Harvest Plus leads the way in the commercialization of biofortification globally, and the Harvest Plus team in Nigeria has been building supply chains for nearly 10 years. With digital products and services for the agro value chain and agro business development in Nigeria, Elkanis and partners have a boosting impact on smallholder farmers and farmers' income and wealth. And the New Fork is a young but proven company that inspires and helps people and organizations worldwide by building food integrity solutions on blockchain. They bring the expertise for guaranteeing authenticity 
and traceability while maintaining transparency. We are a unique bunch with diverse skill sets, gender, ethnicity, culture and experience, but with the shared goal to implement something new to fix an ages-old problem. The Inspire Challenge grant will propel what we already planned. Comprehensive mapping of vitamin A orange maize supply chains, identification of five end users of vitamin A orange maize, creation of the pilot blockchain system with those users, testing of the pilot blockchain system, and grow an orange maize user base and take inventory of interest in scaling up this pilot project. We see Nigeria as a land of opportunity, a country with a youthful population full of ambitions, entrepreneurial spirit, and great ideas to work on. With your help, we can create an ecosystem that will defy hidden hunger and vitamin A deficiency, and will show that Nigeria's broken food system can be fixed. Thank you for your attention. So you may have noticed that I'm multitasking. I'm not sat at my desk listening to all these things. I'm actually out here in the field. One of the benefits of home working is that you can multitask and do different things at the same time. And I'm here in my, my veggie patch here. And I must admit, I have a serious problem here. Look at this, look at this. This was beautiful, this celery. And it's absolutely destroyed now. If only I had an AI based plant detection uh, algorithm to help me with this. I could take a photo and maybe it could tell me what's wrong. I wonder if one exists. Hello everybody. I'm Mamta Sharma from Ikriset. Thanks for the opportunity to share our idea on rapid disease detection and phenotyping. Derailing pests and diseases are responsible for up to 40% of yield losses annually and the losses are more on the background of the climate change inconsistent access to the technologies and lack of the best disease management practices. Early disease detection and rapid phenotyping that remains a real challenge for timely management and deployment of resistant cultivars in the farmer's field. Most current disease detection and screening methods are manual, laborious and requires huge operational cost and specialists to operate. To address this nexus, we are partnering with Wageningen and IMEC to anticipate innovative sensing and AI technologies in early disease detection, automation of disease phenotyping and quantification processes to reduce the qualitative and quantitative crop losses. In this project, the key technology that we will explore is hyperspectral imaging. And now I will hand over it to our partner from Wageningen, Dr. Anish, who will take us through this technology. Digital plant phenotyping with commonly used tools like cameras and 3D sensors allow you to capture structure and color information. Hyperspectral imaging allows you to extract structural as well as physiological traits of the plants simultaneously. That's why there is such excitement about the technology and the reason why we are exploring this technology in the current project. Spectral sensors, however, are highly sensitive to changes in illumination. When working with complex objects like plants, the scattering and the shadowing effects can corrupt the collected data cube, resulting in poor phenotypical traits. Beyond that, there is also the data challenge. A single hyperspectral data cube can be anywhere between 200 to 300 times the size of a color image. As more data is collected, the data processing, analysis and management challenge also begins to scale up very quickly. However, when these challenges are addressed properly, we can extract even more complex traits. For example, as you can see in this image, the stress in plants could be detected much earlier with hyperspectral imaging than with naked eye. This is what we want to leverage in the current project as well. With the focus on early stress detection, three project partners are coming together to ex execute this project. IMEC brings the sensor knowledge and the sensor hardware. Wageningen brings the hyperspectral data analysis experience as well as digital plant phenotyping experience. And Ikrisat is the primary problem owner. The project is planned to be executed in three phases. The first phase focuses on designing the plants or scenarios and the hardware for data acquisition. Phase two will execute 
the data acquisition itself in different plant stress uh, scenarios. And phase three focuses on data analysis of the time series hyperspectral data using advanced machine learning and multivariate regression analysis. The objective here is how early can we detect stress in plants using hyperspectral imaging. This pilot study will provide spectral wavelength for diseases and hyperspectral time series data. This will also provide us AI models and cheaper multispectral sensors for early disease detection. As well as this will help us in improving the data quality as well as visualization. The Inspire Challenge grant, this gives us an opportunity to leverage the large scale disease phenotyping capacity that will improve the breeding selection efficiency and excellence in breeding, which will help us in crop modernization of the breeding programs. In long run, this paves a way to integrate the sensitive technologies in early stress detection. Ultimately, the challenge offers a transformative solutions for inclusive disease management to the farmers, and that will help us in reducing the crop losses and disease losses uh, due to the pests and diseases in their farms. Thank you. So I really struggled to find a way of introducing this one. I don't have a big rangeland and I don't have cattle, but I've got a duck and some chickens. And so to introduce the next one, we are talking about big data in resilience in rangeland communities. Let's travel and hear what their solution is. Hi there, my name is Fiona Flintan and I work for ILRI. And I'm here to tell you about our project called Big Data and Resilience Building of Rangeland Communities. So first of all, I'd like us to clarify what are rangelands and how much of the world do they cover? Well, the first part of that question is fairly easy. The second part is much more difficult because in fact, we just don't know. Figures used can be as high as 80% of global terrestrial area and others much lower. And mainly we are relying on figures from the 1960s or broad mappings of ecological zones such as this one here. Nor do we know the status of rangelands and their health. This is a significant data gap and the subject of a recent report by UNET called a case of benign neglect. Why do we need big data on rangelands? Well, here are some of the responses from our development partners, highlighting the need for guiding investments, protecting biodiversity, protecting livelihoods and access to resources, and for feeding into global processes. Also with One Health high on the global agenda, we need to improve rangeland ecosystem health as part of this. As Paola Agostini from the World Bank highlights here, in order to improve and sustainably manage rangelands in future, what we urgently need is data, data, data. So what will, will this project do to fill this big data gap? Well, we aim to set up the first ever global data platform supported by global actors for monitoring and restoring rangelands. This doesn't necessarily need to be a completely new platform, but it could be an, an adapted one. And we will carry out an extensive review first to identify this. It's anticipated that the platform will draw from different sources of data already existing, as well as new sources such as satellite imagery and crowdsourcing. The latter will also be an opportunity to test out the functionality of the global platform in linking with supporting and drawing from nationally generated data, both from government and local sources. So who are the project partners? We have the CGIR centers led by ILRI and supported by ICRAF and ICADA. Secondly, we have GMV, a private company that we will contract and work with to develop the platform. They've had a lot of experience in this regard and will help us develop a platform that can draw in data from different sources as well as generate data for different uses. We have our development partners, some of them already mentioned, um, and including data networks such as livestock data for decision making. And then when we go to testing, testing out the functionality of the data platform, we have national governments and pastoralist networks. And then of course there is the big, big data platform. Not only do we need you to kickstart this initiative, 
but we see you as partners in this initiative as a sounding and advisory board for us, drawing from the enormous experience um, that you and your grantees have had. Who will use this data platform? Well, the great thing is, it's the same organized, many of the same organizations that we are already involving in the development. We had the multilateral organizations, national governments, pastoral networks, the CGIR centers and other science-based institutions. And finally, there are a number of specific UN conventions and events coming up that have already raised the need for this data to manage, invest and protect rangelands. In order to contribute to this, we must first collect and consolidate data and understand it. And that is what we intend to unlock with this platform. Thank you. I don't know about you, but all these great ideas make me a bit peckish. I'm just going to eat this banana. This is my banana tree. <laughs> it's looking a bit, bit rubbish right now. But it would be really great if I could have an AI extension agent help me on my phone. Is that possible? Hello, I am Carlos Quiroz. I work for the Alliance Biodiversity Seed in Costa Rica. And today I will talk about our idea called Hola Talia. Our proposal addressed the challenge of the lack of information by farmers, which prevents them from making proper decisions. Farmers usually rely on advice by public and private extension services. On one side, the farmer lives in remote places. They have access and use simple technologies and they have very basic education. On the other side, such services, particularly those that are public, lack proper resources to reach them. Their staff numbers are very limited and diminishing, and they suffer from the lack of trust. This divide has been amplified by COVID. Farmers are not visited anymore. Governments have less economic resources, and therefore there is less left for extension services. CGR and partners have an enormous repository of information and we have used it in the past to create different tools to reach the farmer with information, but most of them fall into disuse. Our team has found out several reasons for this, being one of them that the farmer prefers verbal communication. Our solution is super innovative. We will use IBM Watson to create Talia the first AI agricultural hotline. We will feed Talia with Promosa, an excellent and well-curated repository of Mosa. Farmers will access, will access Talia using simple phones through a conversation, just like calling an extension agent. But what is Watson? Watson is an AI technology for customer service that has been used in other contexts like banking to automate customer service. Watson is an interactive process that starts from creating a knowledge bank from, un from unstructured data that publication about bananas. Then through expert training, extension agents, agents poses questions to Watson and evaluate the result to help Watson to learn. Once Watson has some training, it can interact with farmers to improve its verbal capacity. Expert training coupled with farming interactions refines the AI. Our proposal aligns an, an unique set of partners at each step of the interactive process to create Talia. The Alliance Biodiversity Seed has access to extensive resources about Musa and expertise in digital solutions to create a knowledge bank. Corporación Bananera Nacional Corbana has dozens of experts on banana that will train Watson, Watson to become a banana expert. In collaboration with a Minister of Agriculture, Mark, we will implement a service with farmers. The Technological Institute of Costa Rica, Tech, will provide in-depth knowledge on how AI works and how to fine tune Watson to learn faster and become better with each interaction. Both Corbana and Tech have the possibility of developing business models around Talia, 
that will ensure its sustainability after the pilot. Mark has already indicated its willingness to find ways to scale the technology to other key crops like coffee and cacao. The pilot will be done in Talamanca, a very vulnerable canton in Costa Rica with very remote households. We will work with the smallholder farmers that relied on two varieties of musa, ladies' fingers and plantains. We believe that this technology has the potential to change their lives. Thank you very much, and I'm open for questions now. It's always nice to eat some nuts after you enjoy a good banana. But you know something that always worries me? Aflatoxin. It's if only we had a way of knowing if this nut has aflatoxins. Can anyone help? Rapid, low cost, aflatoxin detection using AI. We all have eaten bitter peanuts, but did we know that this is aflatoxin? A carcinogenic toxin which can cause malnutrition and immune suppression? Peanuts and maize are an important part of food systems and in India, and studies have shown alarming rates of aflatoxin in them. This affects both population health and trade drastically. Aflatoxin in food systems has three levels of problems. Elaborate, expensive, and inaccessible testing, missing quality grading, assurance, and traceability, handling and storage malpractices, which are a major cause of aflatoxin. Solutions are rapid, low-cost, easy-to-use aflatoxin testing device, transparent buyer and seller portal for quality-based pricing, and farmer trainings. This will result in higher income for farmers, quality procurement for industry and export, and lower aflatoxin. Aflatoxin fluorescence under UV excitation is captured by our device, which is then processed through our AI algorithm. All you have to do is place D-shell peanuts into the device to capture data. To achieve a target cost of less than 50 USD to farmer, the processing takes, pa takes place on a smartphone application. The device requires work on hardware refinement for robustness and data collection to improve accuracy and range. The device will be sold or rented to farmer groups or traders and the app will help them access the marketplace. The online marketplace has sellers, the farmers, the farmer group and traders, and buyers, the exporters, processors, and other traders. For selling, the farmer approaches the farmer group or trader where his profile is authenticated, produces tested and transferred. This test is uploaded onto the marketplace for auction. The buyer uses an authenticated profile for searching online. He bids against his needed lots and once allocated, does a partial payment. Transportation of produce takes place with a revalidation test. Payment directly goes to the bank account of farmer and farmer group or trader through us. This marketplace will establish transparency and traceability. A seven day turnaround time is guaranteed from produce transfer to money in the bank for the farmer. Higher profits due to additional value for quality. Our major re revenue source is the service fee of 4 to 8% that we charge on each transaction. Aflatoxin drastically affects value chains of peanuts, maize, chilies, and dry fruits in India, whose total production value comes up till 12.9 billion USD per year. If we, charge just, if we target just 1% of this produce, which is achievable in three years, and at a 6% transaction fee, our total potential revenue stands at 7.7 .7 million USD per year, out of which 3 million USD is contributed by peanuts, our first focus crop. We want to scale up into other geographies and crops. ICRASAT has been leading aflatoxin research since the 1980s. Kioskan AI and ICRASAT have completed R&D on low-cost methods, data sample collection for maize and peanuts, 
near market research and engineering processes. Further work is as charted and will include data collection, technology refinement and marketplace building, onboarding of buyers and sellers, technology finalization for scale and validation. Ikrisat is our main scientific R&D and validation partner. Usa Krishi, Qualcomm, and Bios Labs include the other partners. Thank you. Now, I might be making a fool of myself right now, but the next project sounds suspiciously to me like it came from the Star Wars Galactic. Citizen H3D2. Sounds like a droid to me, and I just hope it's on the dark side. Hello, judges. My name is Julia Sadewokwo, and I'm part of a group that is focused on developing digital tools for decision support on nutrition and agricultural productivity. Today, we're presenting our idea titled Citizen-Led Household Dietary Diversity Dynamics. Now, that's a mouthful, so Citizen H2D3 for short. At the heart of developing adaptive food systems lies nutrition. As a Nigerian and as someone who has worked in Rwanda, I'm often confronted with the realities of hunger, malnutrition, and food insecurity. A lot of time, times we're tempted to really think that this is a challenge for specific countries or specific continent like Africa. But data suggests otherwise. With one out of every six persons considered to be undernourished globally, and two out of every seven persons considered to be overweight globally, there's a lot of interest in tackling this problem, but a lot of times we're limited by the data that we have, data that are so coerced or not representative of the entire time scale through season and out of season. And how do we make decisions without the right data? This is where Citizen H2D3 comes in. I wrote this quick video clip to give a snippet of, this, of our idea and I'll take you forward from there. Watch. If we are not monitoring household consumption patterns consistently over space and time, how can we begin to address malnutrition? Digital tools and big data can help us. Citizen H2D3 is a scalable real-time data collection system gathering information on household dietary diversity from volunteers. Users can sign up anonymously using their smartphone, tablet, or laptop, and their privacy is at all times protected. Through the gamified feature of random micro rewards, users will be incentivized to participate actively. Citizen volunteers will be asked on a daily basis about their household dietary consumption. Data is sent to a central database where automated analysis will be implemented to generate information. This information will provide evidence-based insights for understanding malnutrition and the role of gender, income, and education in driving these patterns. With these insights, decision makers will be able to tailor responses to the needs of specific target areas and populations. Citizen H2D3 empowering citizens to eat well and live well. This tool will be used by several users, including researchers, who will develop testable hypotheses that connect the dots between nutritional issues and health outcomes. Social entrepreneurs will be able to use data from this platform to understand consumer preferences and gaps in consumer choices so that they can tailor their product. Individuals will be able to make decisions on what constitutes their nutritional deficiencies and how they could address such. Governments will be able to make actionable policies for the right people at the right time in the right place. Beyond the pilot of this tool, we see two pathways for scaling. The first is to develop Citizen H2D3 as a standalone tool. And the second is to take out the different components, including learning from Citizen H2D3 and embed into systems of partners. For example, VMO that provides information to the public on several issues. Irrespective of a pathway, Citizen H2D3 will inspire new way to understand malnutrition and skill. And it will facilitate reactive and responsive interventions 
to support nutrition and food security. In closing, I'd like to cite the quote of Kofi Annan. Data can really help us to hand malnutrition across Africa. And Citizen H2D3 will unlock insights that will move us closer to this vision. So my banana might look a bit rubbish, but I can tell you, these leafy greens, Asian lettuces are delicious and amazing. Just gotta take them to market though, right? So I've, I have to get my mask on and get out there to go selling them. Unless there's some kind of e-system for selling my fair trade orgasmic greens. Is there one? Hello everyone. I'm Ajay from Magasul Agro Private Limited. On behalf of an interdisciplinary team of Magasul, Gramani and Ikada Geo Agro, I present a pitch for Farmphone, a hotline connecting farmers with consumers to enhance the supply chain and reduce wastage at each level. Here's a real use case from recent times. Shankar is a tenant farmer in the outskirts of Chennai, a major Indian metropolis. He grows watermelons on five acres of leased land from January to April. In the nominal season, his profits are about 1 lakh Indian rupees. Due to COVID-19, however, the resulting lockdown led to 10 times drop in farm gate prices and disruption of supply chains. He suffered losses of 1.2 lakhs Indian rupees. At the same time, Shyamla, a migrant worker in Chennai, could not buy fruits and vegetables for her family due to price spikes at the consumer end of the chain. Mondays were non-functional and she could not connect to farmers like Shankar who were eager to sell their produce even at low prices. COVID-19 is an extreme example, yet farm to fork prices are typically one is to three or worse for many commodities. With five to six intermediaries in a chain, most of the value is lost to arbitrage alone. To address problems of Shamla and Shankar during the lockdown, we ran a pilot connecting 20 farmers around Kalpakam to 1000 migrant workers in Chennai. We created a win-win for all customers and producers and learned that voice-based low-tech solutions worked well on the ground. The question is whether such a voice-based channel for agri-transactions can scale. Farmphone is our innovation to scale the solution a digital version of community supported agriculture with a simple feature phone. And of course, it works on smartphones as well. Shankar places a missed call to a widely circulated number. He gets a call back immediately. He can listen and skip through IVR channels, learn about demand and supply of various items. A voice bot guides him to record his location, produce quality and quantity details. An AI ML based software extracts critical features from his listing and relays information to buyers and suppliers. Consumers like Shamala leave requests for produce in a similar manner. Farm phone helps demand match with supply and connects with transportation and delivery partners post aggregation. The tech framework is already in place with Gramani's rural radio, Mobile Vani, which has 3 million plus subscribers. Gramani is a pioneer in the bottom of the pyramid uh, tech solutions and has presence across 20 Indian states. Farmphone is hence a platform connecting value chain players. Magasul already works with two producer companies with 1500 farmers, 50 tribal farmers of very low income and over 100 B2B and B2C merchants in the network. The first few months of operations will help us train our AI ML models for demand supply matching. Information on the platform will also be moderated with the AI ML along with humans. Ikada GeoAgro will help integrate real time satellite and geotagged field based data to aid in predicting demand and supply dynamics. With established networks, proven farm expertise, and tech frameworks, the team is all set to launch Farmphone, a friend of small farmers and consumers that enables transactions and reduces wastage in food and critical resources. Thank you very much for giving us an opportunity to share our story. I don't know about you, but something that I really struggle with is to put fertilizer on or not to put fertilizer on. It's a difficult question, right? 
Is it the right fertilizer? I have no idea. I need help. Anyone? Hello, everyone. My name is Wellington Pavlan. This project is a partnership of CIMIT, IFDC, and Option Line. It was named Analyzer from nitrogen to all other nutrients. More than 50% of fertilizers applied, especially nitrogen, are not used by the crops. It's fair to say the majority of farmers choose not to use fertilizers or fail to use them properly, and sometimes apply more than necessary, particularly nitrogen, resulting in a poor nutritional balance. This project is all about applying fertilizers properly. We must listen to what the plants say and consider the balance and interaction among all nutritional elements in order to apply fertilizer in such a way that gives plants just what they need, provides to farmers a profitable return and takes care of the environment. Essentially, we are using a smartphone to take a simple picture of the plant and provide the fertilizer recommendation right afterwards. It's based on well-known correlation between nitrogen and chlorophyll to correctly assess the nitrogen level and get the right balance between all nutrients and nitrogen. The groundbreak vision here is to put together the expertise of CIMIT, IFDC and Option Line. This can be done through field experiments, big data, crop modeling and analytics to provide farmers with a correct balance between nitrogen and other elements. Each element is compared to nitrogen according to the plant's phenological stages. So, measuring nitrogen would give us the nutritional level or how much fertilizer should we apply. The phenological stage and nitrogen level of the plant will give us the information to determine the other elements and the amount needed. The key concept here is not to maximize the crop's yield, but optimize the production and minimize the environment effects, consequently increasing the nutritional efficiency. After testing and implementation, Analyzer will be made free available to all farmers and training will be taking place. Analyzer app will be beneficial to all farmers and may even encourage more youth and women participation in farming. The app will continually take advantage of the perfect combination of artificial intelligence and crowdsourcing to keep improving. The first challenge here is to quickly assess the balance between all elements and nitrogen. In order to do so, we need lots and lots of data and a very fast turnaround time. To meet this challenge, we decided to collect and analyze plant sap instead of plant tissue to provide reference values. To provide a fertilizer recommendation, at least for maize and wheat, we must conduct field trials to capture large nutritional differences. There is no question that the smartphone is the largest global digital platform, but each one comes with a different operational system. We must also account for vintage devices, different manufacturers and different cameras. In summary, we need funding to run field trials, analyze SAP and develop the online recommendation platform. CIMIT and IFDC have successful partnership records on crop modeling and field experiments. Their research facilities will generate field data, verify app recommendations, and strengthen the proposed project. Option Line and IFDC will generate a database of leaf images, varieties, fertilizer rates, nutrient content and ratio, and nutrient analysis techniques. This partnership will leverage the three organizations' expertise in crop modeling, data analytics, and artificial intelligence to develop an innovative app for fertilizer recommendations. So, thank you so much. Feel free to reach out and ask any question you might have. We're three quarters of the way through, and I can tell you, any other convention would have run out of a good ideas by now, but not us, no way. Next up, is a project that I really think will rise up to the occasion. Hello, on behalf of our multidisciplinary team of ICADA, ICA, and Kalgudi, a presenting Inspire Challenge pitch on real-time rice flow intensification system. Here is. 
As we all know, nutrition became vital for a healthy gut biome and a stronger immune system that demands diet diversity and crop diversifications, while there's a vast area of the rice fallows uh, left unutilized, nearly 11 to 16 million hectares eastern India alone. So that provided a window of opportunity to grow the additional crops in between those, the, the short duration uh, windows to grow the short duration pulses like a and the lentil, chickpea, grass pea, and wide range of vegetable, which is vital for bridging the food and nutritional gaps and further in a, enriching the soil fertility ecosystem services. The big data with increased location based biodiversity institute data points, along with open access market price and trends and supply demand gaps, opened an opportunity for building an economically and ecological balanced integrated production system. This combined knowledge leads to the real-time rice fallow intensification system to advise farmers to the policymakers and consumer segment as a win-win situations with increased food and nutritional security. This brings together the production systems and market uh, access as a fusion of science and economics ecosystem for better rural prosperity and safeguarding the agrobiodiversity. So under the hood, a demand-driven real-time analytics is inspired by our tested prototype in rice-based systems in the Eastern India that runs on the demand-driven in-season on-the-fly analytics using the multi-scale time series satellite images, geotagging, agro-tagging, trade metrics, and machine learning algorithms to quantify a farming system dynamics and farm typologies, such as extent of the active crop area, the crop phenology, start and end of the harvest, length of the fallows, and corresponding soil moisture and crop suitability and on-farm water management leads to the delineation of the hotspot for site-specific intervention for early planning. So while on the ground, a demand-driven delivery of the risks is set with the three modules, the right crop selections, good farming practices, post-harvest informatics. The bidirectional geotagging with in-season multi criteria informations help farmers like the Lakshmi to select the right crop choice. Similarly, similarly, uh, real-time precision interventions during the growing cycles to adopt a proper management practices. This results in optimal use of the inputs, hence reducing the cost of the cultivations. Once the crop is harvested, the Lakshmi can access to the better market price and supply chain at her fingertips. Such collective actions lead to the, the doubling the farmer income of the millions of far, the, the farmers and reduce the wastages while safeguarding the ecosystem services. It certainly demands a paradigm tips towards the inclusive agroecosystems that are economically viable and ecologically sustainable. This is where uh, risks play a great you know, the catalyst. It helps optimizing the diversified cropping system with demand-driven site-specific interventions and connecting the producer to the better market access leads to a sustainable intensification system with financial inclusion to build a resiliently inclusive agroecosystems. With inspired funding, past experience, and right blend of the multidisciplinary partnership from the ICADA and digital augmentations, well-established ground level coverage by the Kalgudi Convergent Platform, the team is promised to deliver a smart precision decision tool to the national system. The real-time rice well intensification system that helps to bring a, a sustainable intensification of the cereal-based system like rice fallows to a whole new level. It will provide a timely advice to farmers and policymakers to bridge the yield and nutritional gaps of millions of the small water farmers and increase research use efficiency and safeguarding the ecological flow. Thank you for providing us an opportunity to present a st the, the scalable use case. Now I'm really conflicted about this next project. The title is Smart Storage Centers for Smallholder Farmers. Who says you need to store for smallholder farmers? And where are you going to? Where are you going to put them? What for? Unless it's about storage of product, hermetically sealed storage centers. Let's, let's hear all about it. Hello everyone, I'm Anant Raj from Ten Agro Technologies and we are partnering with Summit to set up smart storage center for smallholder farmers to help them tide over distress selling and post-harvest costs. Let me start off by talking about Amulia. Amulia is a hardworking smallholder farmer from Kenya. She was able to save money and purchase the best possible agriculture inputs for herself. Fortunately for her, there were good rains and she had a bumper harvest. Now I know what you all must be thinking. 
This is great for Amulia. Unfortunately, the story doesn't end here. Amulia and her fellow farmers had a bumper harvest, which created an excess supply in the market and a price crash. Now, Amulia had a choice to make. Should she sell her harvest at prevailing low market prices or store it in a nearby collection center and risk losing anywhere between 15 to 25 percent of her harvest? Additionally, Amulia also had another challenge. She's been working hard on her farm for the last four to six months without any income, and she needed money to meet her household expenses. Amulia decided to sell to the nearest available tra trader at low market prices and was barely able to break even on her production cost. This is the story of millions of farmers globally who are unable to access scientific storage or financial services due to low volume, are unable to extract market best prices from the markets. At 10 Agro Technologies, we are collaborating with Summit, a global research institution with more than 20 years experience in hermetic designs to change the story. We are integrating a digital layer into hermetic technology. Our smart storage unit is able to leverage hermetic technology for storage, IoT devices and an ML algorithm for grading of produce and a mobile enabled platform for supply chain services. We will be working with farmer organizations to set these digitally connected modular storage units according to their needs. All these centers will also be integrated with an IoT device and an ML algorithm, which helps them grade the produce, grains, and maize on various quality parameters like moisture, temperature, humidity, discoloration, pests, etc. Once these grains are inside the bin, it will be quickly turned into a digital asset based on all the uh, parameters of the grains. And the farmers can use this digital asset to trade over our platform for accessing financial services and market services. These bins can also be remotely opened and closed, as well as the grains inside it can be remotely monitored. This ensures that the collateral is safe and secure for all the stakeholders in the supply chain. The life of these bins is anywhere between 12 to 15 years, and we are optimizing on the cost of designs to ensure that the farmers are able to own these assets in three to four seasons through a pay as you store method. This ensures that the cost of storage is really low in the medium to long term. These kind of centers are also great for decentralized markets in COVID like situation and also for ensuring traceability throughout the supply chain. We've already started working on these products, having created multiple prototypes and IoT devices. Through this grant, we hope to collaborate with Summit, who have a global database of quality parameters of maize and other grains, as well as a post harvest knowledge center. Our product will be able to reduce the cost of post harvest losses by 70%, increase formal financial services by 50%, and increase market prices for farmers by 20%. We have a cross disciplinary team with more than 50 years of combined experience in technology, design, operations, and strategy. And we're also collaborating with other supply chain players like EAGC for product validation and price verification, AgriWallet for financial services, Mahindra for market access. Through these collaborations, we hope to test, validate, and scale this product globally to millions of farmers. And we hope to have CGIAR as part of our journey. Thank you so much. I love a nice cup of coffee. But for a nice cup of coffee, you need a certain amount of coffee production, right? But how do I know if I'm gonna have enough, right? Well, I mean, it's, it's everyone's favorite pastime, right? Bean counting. Here we go, one, two, three, four. But surely there's a faster way of doing this. How can we predict how much production we're going to have. My name is Claire Rhodes and I'm pleased to introduce you to Quapi, the photo cropping app that gamifies real-time data collection on crop yields designed by farmers for farmers. The benefits of big data and AI remain largely inaccessible to the world's 1 billion smallholder farmers, yet arguably it is these farmers who need this data the most. Smallholders face significant, numerous challenges on a daily basis, now including COVID-19, and face this risk without any access to external data. This is currently a typical data management system for a smallholder. 
Access to yield prediction data could undoubtedly enable smallholders to farm more sustainably and more profitably. Our plan to tackle this challenge starts with coffee. Why coffee? We already know AI models can be used to predict coffee yields. This has been proven and can be trained using photos of coffee branches and coffee cherries. Unlocking AI's potential to support smallholders with yield predictions faces one big barrier. Training AI models requires a very large volume of ground truthing data. This does not currently exist at scale because it is hard and costly to collect reliable on-farm data, the data that is collected is not standardized and the data is time bound and a static snapshot, not real time. What if we could use proven behavioral change methods to involve farmers in the data collection process, enabling them to see the instant rewards from their actions? This is where Coffee will come in. Meet Sylvia, one of the Peruvian coffee farmers we work with. At the start of the season, Sylvia uses Coffee to take a photo of her coffee cherries. Immediately, she receives a yield prediction back based on her photo. Throughout the season, Sylvia continues to photo crop, uploading more photos as her coffee cherries ripen. This is all incentivized by Sylvia earning points that enable her to move up Coffee's farmer leaderboard, unlocking rewards as she progresses. Coffee will enable Sylvia to access bespoke tips on how she can improve her farm yields and profits. Across multiple seasons, Sylvia's predicted and actual coffee yields are documented so that she can track her farm's long-term performance and potentially access finance to invest in her farm. At the same time, Coffee will be building a groundbreaking photo data set. Uniquely, the data set will be real-time and continuous. We will create a low-cost mechanism to collect a large volume of ground-truthing data, generating thousands of photos, all in a standardized format removing currently high levels of variance. This will be overlaid with secondary environmental data to train and refine AI-generated yield predictions. Our team represents a diverse group of world-class experts who collectively bring internationally recognized expertise in pharma-centered design and scaling digital solutions with smallholders and in pairing agronomy with pioneering yield prediction models using AI as well as an international network of over 1 million smallholder farmers. So far, we have tested data collection methods with over 600 farmers and learned how these farmers would like to use the data in the decision-making. From here, our copy prototyping plan has two main interdependent work streams. Firstly, demonstrating our data proof of concept, proving that large volumes of photo data can be uploaded using smartphones and used to train the AI model. And secondly, establishing and working with pharma design groups in Peru and Uganda to develop and test copy, including trialing incentives to photocrop and ensuring the yield predictions generated are accurate, valuable and actionable. From there, we will scale to 50,000 farmers to validate the model. We already have the power and the expertise to develop, test and scale copy beyond coffee to other crops and scaling to millions of farmers worldwide, while also creating and open sourcing a unique real-time data set to advance AI innovation, and ultimately increasing incomes for smallholders worldwide, while delivering our vision to put the power of big data firmly into the hands of these smallholder farmers. Thank you. Dad, the dog is eating your shoe. Oh no, stop it. We all need to learn from emergency response. Next up, we're gonna hear from a team that are gonna use near field communication to learn what happened in Mozambique and how to get better at it. Good evening, everybody. Our topic is about the real voice of small farmers, applying effective NFC technology for comprehensive emergency responses uh, in Mozambique. What is the challenge here? Responding to smallholder farmer needs during emergencies requires integrated technological and multi-sector solutions involving agriculture, health, and other dimensions. Um, in contexts such as those in northern Mozambique with poor access to resources, the problem is fundamentally due to, first, the lack of adequate and timely information on farmer demands for production inputs, food, and health services. Second, the inability to monitor the delivery of products and services that leads to episodes of theft and illicit trading. 
And finally, the costly and limited internet access in most rural areas further complicates the use of ICT solutions designed to address these challenges. Conceptually, our proposed approach breaks the silos as it goes beyond agricultural interventions to account for other dimensions critical for comprehensive solution. Our solution is this, NFC card, near field communication and cell phone technology, data collection by NFC card. We can gather information from small farmers. At the baseline survey, we can collect the basic data of each farmer. In operation, we can have the details of transaction record. Our solution can collect the digital data from many aspects of farmers, and it can work <coughs> no internet connection. In other words, it is very effective for multi-sector activity and analysis in African rural areas. We have used this technology since 2012 in Mozambique with several organizations. Mainly, we have focused on distribution of subsidy for agricultural inputs. With FAO, we have collaborated for about five years. So far, the total beneficiary number is over 120,000. We are trying to include activity of health sector and academic analysis. This project is a collaboration between ADM, a Japanese-founded private company in Mozambique, IFPRI, and CEPAC, a research center at Edward Mundran University in Mozambique. ADM's role is system modification and field implementation and knowledge about Japanese development process by comprehensive farmers' cooperatives. IFPRI and CEPAC will handle the research design and the data analysis. Project site is Libawe, Nampura province in northern Mozambique. The first four months are for preparation, selection of community, and random selection of beneficiaries and baseline survey, also, also system modification. The next six months are for operation. We are planning to distribute monthly supply and a simple health check. Each beneficiary can use the value in the card to select between agricultural inputs, food items, and sanitation goods. We can collect the data about real demand under this emergency. The last two months are for data analysis and publication preparation. Our outcome can be the step to understand the real voice of small farmers. Agricultural de development must be comprehensive we need to consider not only agricultural productivity, but also farmers' health, education, and all other factors. That is why we include a simple health check and sanitation goods into this project. This is a step to more comprehensive development and multi-sector analysis. A future plan is to create innovative agriculture platform in Africa. It's like digital farmers' cooperative it connects small farmers with all related stakeholders. It means everyone. We can achieve comp comprehensive agricultural development in Africa with this platform. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's just making me, making me cry, all this. All these great ideas. It might also be the onion. <laughs> Look, I know some of you are panicking already, but what about the fish? Don't worry, we got great ideas with fish. Let's hear about the solutions we have for aquatic systems. Hello everyone. Today, Kiran and I will be presenting our idea of using near infrared technology and machine learning as a rapid way to detect hazards in aquatic foods. The inclusion of diverse, nutritious, and safe foods in diets is a vital part of food security and a major development goal of the UN. Fish and other aquatic foods play key roles in the food system, supplying protein to more than 3 billion people. But aquatic foods are easily perishable, so food hazards remain a major risk to poor and vulnerable communities. According to a global food security and nutrition report, 2 billion people lack access to safe and sufficient food year-round, with the latest COVID-19 pandemic leaving those food systems even more vulnerable. Rapid hazard detection is the first step towards getting safe foods for consumption. 
Aquatic foods can be contaminated in different ways, for example, through preservatives such as formalin, antibiotic residues, or exposure to pesticides. These hazards can be harmful to the health of consumers and local farming communities, making regular monitoring necessary. Till now, we have been solely dependent on expensive and lengthy lab tests for detection. So how can we make detection of aquatic food hazards more accessible and affordable to benefit small producers and value chain actors? We propose an integrated tool combining near-infrared technology with an existing cloud platform called Discovery, which trains algorithms to predict quantitative values from raw NIR data. We'll first begin model calibration by analyzing gradual levels of contaminated aquatic food samples in the lab. Raw IR data from these samples are collected using our point-and-shoot device and sent to the discovery platform for algorithm training. The more data we capture, the higher the model accuracy. Upon optimization, end users can access all predictions in real time using Discovery's mobile phone app. Kiran from Zen Spectra will give you a walkthrough of this process. The platform architecture consists of near-infrared sensors and edge processors, which collect and send NIR spectral data to the connected mobile via the Bluetooth. Mobile app synchronizes spectral data scans with cloud NoSQL data stores. The data is then processed and visualized with Google App Engine application and cluster of TensorFlow AI processing backbone. The device will be able to work offline, remotely, and storing data on mobile memory, which will be then synchronized with the cloud upon internet access. There is a geolocation sensing facility inbuilt in the application, which can be used for map-based analytics and pinpointing the scan locations. Our device works in four simple steps. Number one, collection of training data sets in a controlled environment. Number two, calibration of AI model on discovery platform using these data sets where the best AI TensorFlow model is determined for spectral feature sets. Number three, deployment of selected AI model to the mobile app for blind testing and validation. Step four, once the, once the model is approved for accuracy, the AI model is then deployed for field use. Thank you. Thanks, Kiran. Our innovation is a powerful surveillance tool for hazards within the aquatic food system. If selected, we will have mapped trends of value chains from farm to consumer and more baseline data for regulators to form and enforce effective food safety policies. We can limit contingency measures to hazard points and avoid disrupting the entire supply chain. This will prevent unsafe products from reaching consumers and reduce the risk to distributors and retailers. Small-scale producers will benefit by gaining better quality products, public trust, and stronger market resilience. Ultimately, we will have better access to healthy, safe, nutritious aquatic foods. Our tool is widely adaptable to every level of the food system, providing high potential for future One Health applications, perhaps even for determining safety from COVID-19 contamination. Thank you all for listening. Now, is it just me or was that last presentation a little bit fishy? But I really hope it scales up. Now, for the next one, we're going to hear about insects, locusts to be specific. I couldn't find a locust in my garden, fortunately, but found a little praying mantis. Maybe this gives you a bit of an idea of what we're going to be up to. So, we're going to hear about locusts and a low cost way of monitoring them. Hello, I'm Georgina, and I'm presenting on behalf of Climacell.org, and our partners, ACADA, the International Centre for Agricultural Research in the Dry Areas, and global weather intelligence company Climacell. We're a team that's using weather intelligence to monitor and control the desert locust, with a first-of-its-kind 360-degree early warning tool co-designed with and for farmers. If it was not for COVID-19, the locust crisis would be the most significant challenge facing our planet this decade. Swarms in Africa reach sizes larger than New York City this year. They travel at over 150 kilometres a day and eat any vegetation that crosses their path. Many emergency control measures have been taken, but without timely village level warnings, the response has remained primarily reactive rather than proactive. Millions are now at risk of famine and damages of 8.5 billion are predicted. 
eggs have been laid and are now hatching. And due to weather conditions that promote swarm formation, a frightening resurgence is on its way. What this means in reality for a pastoralist like Dalmas here is that he and his family continue to live in fear. With a locust early warning, he would know to cover or harvest his crops before they attacked. He would move his cows to different lands. And then there's the public system responsible for early warnings and spraying. The pesticide suppliers, drone companies, there are dozens of daily decisions needed to be taken for the ecosystem to be ready to fight. And yet everyone is limited due to a lack of localized early warnings. The good news is that due to advancements in weather intelligence, we can now through our solution, both monitor the locust and provide actionable village level early warnings. Weather's a driving force behind locust behavior. Egg hatching is triggered by certain moisture levels. Wind dictates swarm movement. Locusts remain grounded when cloud cover is over 0.65. These thresholds paired with weather intelligence can trigger timely advice, improve response time and save crops. Our motivation behind this project is to ensure that weather intelligence is localized and gets into the hands of farmers. Our innovative tool involves four components. Automated locust alerts generated by state-of-the-art weather models and displayed on a web-based dashboard. Rapid decision-making enabled by weather intelligent recommendations. Warnings shared via any digital channel and validation. We've built a feature that embeds locust sightings crowdsourced directly from the field via mobile, which then feeds back into the engine to improve prediction. We have a prototype built and tested with Kenyan farmers during a recent virtual hackathon we led. And now with Inspire Funding and ACADA partnership, we're excited to expand on this work to run a full scale pilot. With Climacell, we're building on the strong foundations of an advanced global weather intelligence engine. And with ACADA, localizing this tech for farmers. Climacell's cloud-based one forecast engine integrates regional, global, and proprietary models with all available satellite data and ground observations. This data is combined with machine learning models to create insights, which can then be shared automatically via API dashboard or SMS. During our hackathon, we adapted Climacell's one, one forecast platform for locust action with live farmer feedback. We've we first created two locust specific models to predict swarm movement and hatching, and second, integrated locust sightings via WhatsApp to ground truth and improve models in real time. As a cloud based software as a service solution, computing costs are kept low and specific hardware is not needed. Instead, we can leverage established 2G, 3G smartphone channels to engage millions. The key now is to move to a pilot phase, which we can do with Inspire's support. Carter's drylands cover 42% of the world's geographic area and half of the world's population, 20% of which is prone to the desert locust. So as a next step, we intend to test and iterate our co-built prototype with farmers like Ronald tweeting here, localize one forecast for the drylands with input from regional climate experts and take the tool to the wider community. With our solution, we can all be better prepared to fight the locust, help millions of farmers make crop saving decisions and avoid 8.5 billion in damages. We have the partners aligned to make this pilot a success. And by working together, we can strengthen the public private NGO partnerships necessary to enable inclusive scale, thus unlocking the possibilities of weather intelligence for everyone. Thank you. So there we have it. I hope you've enjoyed those 15 pitches as much as I have. They are great ideas. They were pitched brilliantly and they're poised to change the world. But unfortunately, we don't have the money to give them all a prize. If I was rich and famous, which sadly for you lot I'm not, I'd give you all $100,000. But no, we've got a limited budget. We're gonna to have to choose the best. And so it really is about the judges now. The judges are gonna take into account the proposals, the pitches, all the chat box and the discussion that went on over the last uh, few minutes, over the last hour while we were hearing those pitches, and they're gonna choose the best ideas. We'll be back on Friday to be giving out those prizes in the closing ceremony of the convention. Make sure you come back to see which ones go forward. So that's all from me for, for today. Thanks so much for joining. I hope you enjoyed it as much as me and Good luck to those, those, those projects that are pitched today. I hope you win. Thanks a lot.